To celebrate the release of Tomorrowland, let's take a look at the many Easter eggs and references in Disney's live-action adventure movie. Writer and director Brad Bird may have turned down the opportunity to direct Star Wars Episode 7 because it clashed with his schedule for making Tomorrowland, but he still managed to include several Star Wars Easter eggs in his movie. As Star Wars fans know, those movies have a little thing for chopping characters' arms or hands off. So, in a nod to Star Wars, Tomorrowland shows George Clooney's character Frank chopping off the hand of one of the baddies who's attacking Britt Robertson's character in his home. And there are tons of other Star Wars nods in the movie too in the Blast from the Past store. When Keegan-Michael Key's character Hugo makes his dramatic entrance, you can hear John Williams' Star Wars theme. There's a life-size replica of Han Solo in Carbonite from The Empire Strikes Back. There's a poster of Yoda up on the wall. And there's also a Yoda head on the shelf by the life-size Stormtrooper. There's also what looks like an all-terrain scout transport on the shelf. And there's an R2-D2. And did you notice the Millennium Falcon, the various TIE fighters hanging from the ceiling, and what looks like a Death Star? And check out that photo of C-3PO and R2-D2. And let's not forget the bunch of lightsabers on the wall, the Stormtrooper helmet and Darth Vader helmet on the shelf, and the illuminated sign that says Star Wars The Empire Strikes Back. Plus there's a brass lightsaber, and there's a Stormtrooper figure on the shelf. And then of course there's all those Star Wars comic books and check out Catherine Hahn's hair in the movie. As Ursula girls back, she sports Princess Leia style buns on the side of her head. When the movie's art department designed the 1984 version of the jetpack we see in Tomorrowland, they were influenced by Star Wars, particularly in its shiny white metallic finish, which was inspired by Stormtroopers. There's also a wealth of other Disney Easter eggs and references too. There's a photo of Walt Disney who created the Tomorrowland section of Disneyland in 1955. And if you look carefully, you'll see a few Mickey Mouses hidden about the Blast from the Past store. Plus, there's an album cover from the soundtrack of Disney's sci-fi movie from 1979, The Black Hole. When Tomorrowland opened, it had on show the sets of the Nautilus from Disney's live-action sci-fi movie 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea, which was released in 1954 and was based on Jules Verne's 19th century novel of the same name. And if you look carefully, you can see a 1965 vinyl record of Johnny Quest in 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea in the Blast from the Past store. And there's some Johnny Quest collectibles too, including a Quest World Cybercopter. Johnny Quest was an animated sci-fi series from Hanna-Barbera that started in the mid-60s and followed a boy's adventures with his scientist father. During the World's Fair in the movie, you can spot the White Rabbit from Disney's 1951 film Alice in Wonderland and the Big Bad Wolf from Disney's short film Three Little Pigs, which won the Oscar for Best Animated Short in 1934. Among the stuff Katie gets back from the local police is a pack of Beeman's gum, which is a nod to the right stuff, an early 80s movie about military test pilots in America's first efforts at manned spaceflight. In the right stuff, pilot Chuck Yeager asked for some Beeman's gum before a flight. The same gum also saved the day in the plot of 1991 Disney movie The Rocketeer, which brought to life the jet-packed superhero created by comic book artist Dave Stevens. When Casey tells Frank that she knows how gadgets and things work, Frank replies, well, zippity-doo for you. That's a reference to the song zippity doo Dar, which featured in Disney's live action and animated film Song of the South and won the Oscar for Best Original Song in 1947. Tomorrowland also features Disneyland's It's a Small World ride, which in the movie acts as a portal that takes a young Frank to the futuristic city of Tomorrowland. The ride was created especially for the 1964 World's Fair in New York and is made up of animatronic dolls representing the children of the world. The ride's accompanying song, It's a Small World After All, was written by Robert and Richard Sherman, who wrote many movie song scores including Mary Poppins and Chitty Chitty Bang Bang. The song's optimistic theme of world peace and international unity was a response to the Cuban Missile Crisis. In the movie, as well as It's a Small World After All, you can also hear the brothers' song There's a Great Big Beautiful Tomorrow, which they wrote for Disney's Carousel of Progress attraction at the 1964 World's Fair. 
As well as writing the score for Tomorrowland, composer Michael Giacchino also makes a cameo appearance as the operator of the It's a Small World ride at the 1964 World's Fair. Oh, and Giacchino also composed the music for Tomorrowland director Brad Bird's movies Ratatouille, The Incredibles and Mission Impossible Ghost Protocol. It's interesting that it's a pin that takes Casey to the city of Tomorrowland, as Disney's theme parks have long sold collectible pins, and the tradition of Disney pin trading has been around since Disney World's Millennium Celebration in late 1999. For the Tomorrowland pin, the movie's design team used the orange and blue colours of the 1964 World's Fair. According to director Brad Bird, they wanted something that felt a bit retro but also classic, so they used the universal symbol of the atom like a rising sun in the background. As for the letter T, they tweaked it a bit to make it look like a jetpack that's blasting off. Among the buildings we see on the skyline of the City of Tomorrowland is Space Mountain, the popular ride that opened in 1975 in the Tomorrowland section of the Magic Kingdom theme park in Florida's Disney World. There's also a bunch of references to the work of Tomorrowland director Brad Bird and to Pixar. So there's a Bart Simpson doll hanging from the shelf in the Blast from the Past store. Bird was executive consultant on The Simpsons for many years and directed several episodes as well as a music video Do the Bartman. Which is interesting because the Bart doll in Tomorrowland is wearing the purple mask of his alter ego, the Bartman. Other Simpsons Easter eggs include a plush toy of the show's comic book superhero Radioactive Man, whose catchphrase is up an atom, and a figure of the Collector, who's the villainous alter ego of Comic Book Guy, and appeared in season 11's Treehouse of Horror 10. Brad Bird also directed an animated feature film called The Iron Giant, which is about a young boy and a robot in the 1950s, and there's a whole host of the Iron Giant collectibles, including figures and artwork, in the Blast from the Past store. Rock'em Sock'em Robots is a boxing robots game created in the mid-60s. It features a red rocker and a blue bomber, and the idea is for the players to knock the other robots head loose. The Rock'em Sock'em Robots have a speaking cameo in Pixar's Toy Story 2, and they can also be seen among Bob Parr, aka Mr. Incredibles Things, in The Incredibles, which was written and directed by Tomorrowland director Brad Bird. And there's loads of other pop culture goodies around the Blast and the Past store too. Keegan-Michael Key and Catherine Hahn play Hugo and Ursula Gernsback. The name of Key's character is a nod to publisher Hugo Gernsback, who launched Amazing Stories in 1926, which was the first magazine devoted to science fiction. There was actually a 1920s copy of Amazing Stories in the box labelled 1952, which was discovered in the Disney archive and sparked the idea for the movie Tomorrowland. Interestingly enough, many years Years later, Brad Bird's movie The Incredibles also featured on the cover of Amazing Stories. There's a lot of Marvin the Martian collectibles, including toys, a snow globe, folder, and cups on the counter and the shelves. And from the day the Earth stood still, there's a life-size version of the robot Gort. Toy Story's 2 Darth Vader-esque evil Emperor Zurg, whose Buzz Lightyear's arch enemy, also puts in an appearance in the store. Plus there's the Strobot Robot 3000, a 1980s walking robot with flashing red eyes and laser. And there's a Chief Robot Man, a popular Japanese robot from Yoshida in the 1960s. Another robot, this time from the 1950s, is the wind-up space robot Sparky, who walks and sparks from his mouth. There's also a nod in the movie to Marvel, with the Spider-Man box that you can just make out behind the chief robot man toy in front of it. Plus there's the Lilliput robot tin toy, which is considered the first tin toy robot made in late 1930s Japan. Also on the counter we see Omnibot, a small personal robot made in the 1980s that had a cassette player, digital clock, the ability to carry objects including a tray and much more. Thanks to a t-shirt in the shop, there's a nod to Flash Gordon, who was the hero of a sci-fi comic strip created by artist Alex Raymond in the 1930s, and the star of a movie serial, various live action and animated TV series, and of course the cult 1980 movie Flash Gordon. There's also a poster for the sci-fi horror movie Dr. Cyclops, about a mad scientist in the Amazon jungle who shrinks his colleagues. The film was directed by Ernest B. Shodzak and released in 1940. Shodzak also directed with Marion C. Cooper the 1933 film King Kong, which you can see a figure of on the counter. 
Now, what other Easter eggs and references did you spot in Tomorrowland? Let me know in the comments below. If you like this video, do please share it, hit the thumbs up button and subscribe for my movie reviews and interviews. Thanks for watching and see you next time. Yippee-ki-yay, movie lovers.